This lesson is uh, about the segment addition postulate. We've actually got a couple objectives here. We want to make sure that we understand these fundamental geometry definitions, how to define lines, rays, segments, and what a postulate is. And then we also want to be able to apply the segment addition postulate, specifically apply the segment addition postulate algebraically. So what's a line? Well, by definition, a line is an infinite number of points on a straight path that extends in two opposite directions with no end and has no thickness. Now, a line typically looks like this, and how I know it's a line is because there's arrows on both sides. Now, we have an infinite number of points on the line. However, to name a line, I need to know two points that exist on that line. This allows me to name this line as either line AB. Notice I write the two points with the line symbol above. Or I could have written it as line BA. When I'm dealing with a line, I can name the same line either way. Another way that they name a line is sometimes you'll see a letter in cursive or sometimes look like script written and it doesn't associate to a point on that line. Another way to write this would be to say this is line L. All right. Now, if we take a line and we cut off one of the kind of extensions, if you will. So, in other words, if I have something that looks like this, where this is my point A and it's still passing through point B, this is no longer a line. The reason why it's no longer a line is because it has this one distinct endpoint. By definition, a ray is a part of a line that consists of one endpoint and all the points of the line of one side of that endpoint. All right? We can call this ray AB. When naming a ray, we write the starting point first and another point it passes through with the ray symbol pointing to the right on top. If you try to name this ray BA, this is bad. Bad, bad, bad. Don't do this. All right? That is not describing the ray that we have a picture of. Now, a segment takes a line and or a ray, and it cuts it into a distinct starting point and ending point. All right? By definition, it's a part of a line that consists of two points. Both of them are called endpoints and all the points in between them. We can name this segment AB. Notice I just put a bar over the top of AB, or I can call this segment BA. Both of these are acceptable when naming a segment. Now, a postulate is very simply a geometric statement that we accept to be true. In geometry, we have these things that are called postulates and these things that are called theorems. A postulate, you automatically accept to be true. A theorem technically has to be proven in order for it to be accepted to be true. We're going to look at one specific postulate now, and this is the segment addition postulate. Very simply, what the segment addition postulate says, it really, really makes sense if you think about it. It says if you take this little segment AB and you take another segment BC and you put them together, you get this whole segment here, segment AC. And that's exactly what the segment addition postulate says. Now, we're going to take this postulate, segment addition, and apply it to an algebraic type of setting. So let's take a look here. It says, use the segment addition postulate to answer the following questions. First one says, find the length that is indicated. Now, if you notice here, there's a question mark. Any time I see a question mark, I always substitute the variable x. Now, according to the segment addition postulate, it says segment FG, 
which is x, plus segment gh, which is 8, has to equal, notice how they're signifying segment fh. From here all the way to here is 13. Solve for x, subtract 8, and we get x is equal to 5. There's my solution. So what if they gave me a little bit more complicated algebraic situation, like these two questions? Well, the segment addition postulate still stays true. We have 5x minus 2 plus 9, and that has to equal 9x minus 1. No distributes. Combine like terms on the left, though. 5x plus 7 equals 9x minus 1. I want to move my x's to the right. So I have 7 equals 4x minus 1. This means I have to move the 1 to the left by adding it. I have 8 is equal to 4x. And then divide to solve, I get x is equal to 8 divided by 4, which is 2. All right, how about this one? Well, I've got x plus 8 plus x plus 11 equals the whole piece, which is 17. Little piece plus little piece equals big piece is another way to say the segment addition postulate. I'm going to combine like terms. x plus x, well, that's 2x. 8 plus 11, that's 19, is equal to 17. Solve for x by subtracting 19, so 2x is equal to negative 2. Divide by 2 to solve, x is equal to negative 1. Now, it may seem a little weird because we got x to be a negative here, and we know that a segment can't have a negative measurement. That's okay. x is negative 1 is not saying one of the segments is negative. It's just saying we have a negative value for our variable. If I plug it in, I have negative 1 plus 8 or 7. I have negative 1 plus 10, or sorry, plus 11 or 10. I still have 7 plus 10 equals 17. All right? Try these last couple right here. So notice what they did now on this, though. They take the segment addition scenario. But now what they want us to do is find a specific measurement. In this case, they want us to find the measurement of IG. To do this, I first have to find X. So I use the segment addition, 5 plus 10X is equal to the big piece, 14X plus 1. I'm going to move my X's to the right because there's more over there. So I have 5, subtract 10X, 4X plus 1. Subtract the 1 to move it over with the 5. So I have 4 is equal to 4x. Divide by 4, I get x is equal to 1. Now, I found x, but I didn't answer the question. I know that ig, ig is equal to 14x, but we found x to be 1, plus 1. So I know ig is equal to 14 plus 1 or 15. This is how the answer should be labeled. The specific piece that you found should be identified by using the two endpoints. Let's try one more. They want us to find FH. Now again, they want us to find the whole piece then. I know to find the whole piece, I have to first find X. I have 12 plus 2X plus 30 equals the big piece x plus 31. I'm going to combine like terms on the left. 2x plus 42 is equal to x plus 31. I'm going to move this x over to the left. So I have x plus 42 is equal to 31. I'm going to subtract 42 from 31, so I get negative 11. There's x. But they want me to find FH. I know that FH is negative 11 plus 31, or FH is equal to 20. After you watch the video, if you have any questions, please let me know. Good luck.